So we've seen how we can estimate both the mean and the variance. And we also know how we can estimate um, standard deviation uh, and that brought about the standard error. So now what we're going to be looking at in this set of videos um, is how we can consider what we can do with that information. Because alone, if I just state what the mean and the standard error are for a set of data, alone, they're not really particularly useful. Um, unless you were comparing uh, two sets of data and you had two means and two um, standard errors, and the data that you were considering were, was quite similar of where, where that data would come from. So alone, it's not really of much use. But there is a way of using that information to then say, well, I am 90% uh, confident that the population uh, mean will be between two certain values. And this is what we are going to mean by a confidence interval. So it might be 90% confident, it might be 95% confident, or 99% confident, okay? Um, it's just a percentage of what I am considering. So, let's say we have x bar is normally distributed with a mean mu and a variance which we know is sigma squared over n. Okay? Now, um, that means that what we're considering here is a bell curve with a mean mu and then as we did in the first video on normal distribution we can split the bell curve up so we've got mu plus uh, one set of uh, the standard error mu plus two lots of the standard error mu plus three lots so three lots of the standard error and this would be mu take away one lot of the standard error, two lots of the standard error, then three lots of the standard error. Okay? So, what we're looking at is we want a certain percentage of this. And it is this value that really we need to consider of how much we actually want. So, that would be down to the Z value that we're calculating. So if we wanted, for example, a 90% confidence interval, then I would need to say, well, I need the Z value such that I'm looking at 90% of the information. And there's the two tails either side, which would be 5% each in order to make it up to 100%. So in order to work out what the Z value is, we would have to use the inverse norm of 0 0.05. That would give me that value there. So if I do that quickly on the uh, blue calculator, you can also do this through the uh, tables at the back of the formula booklet. So inverse norm of 0 0.05, and you get minus 1.645. So minus 1.645 to three decimal places. So this is minus 1.645, and that is plus 1.645. Okay? So what we would be saying is to construct a confidence interval where I'm 90% confident that the population mean lies between these two values, I'd be saying, well, the first one is the mean take away 1.645 times the standard error. That would be my lower confidence limit. And the upper confidence uh, limit would be mu plus 1.645 times sigma over root n, the standard error. Okay? And this is how we are going to be calculating a confidence interval. 
So, this tells me how confident I am of the population mean being between these two values. But obviously, you know, it's, it's not perfect, um, because obviously the, the mean could lie on either side, in either tail of this main 90%. But, it is quite unlikely. And if you wanted to be more confident, you might increase this to 99% confident, in which case we would have different z-values, and the confidence interval would expand and widen.